It was a bright and beautiful day, perfect for a wedding, and everyone was ready to have the time of their lives. However, things took a drastic turn when the priest took one look at the bride and stopped everything. The reason will shock you. Friends and family members of the groom were arriving at the church in large numbers. Outside, a long line of cars waited to be parked, while the security team worked diligently to clear the road and direct the cars neatly into the parking lot. Inside the church, the priest, Lucas, stood in his office, preparing for the service. Both the bride and groom, Hannah and Nathan, arrived within minutes of each other, just as Lucas preferred. He disliked it when the bride and groom were late to their own wedding. Not long after, the wedding ceremony was underway, and it was time for the bride to walk down the aisle. Nathan stood at the altar, a goofy smile on his face, as he kept trying to straighten out his suit, doing his best to look perfect on his big day. Meanwhile, Hannah stood at the entrance of the church, a bouquet in her hand, dressed in the most beautiful wedding gown anyone had ever seen. There was a veil over her face, as she stood alone at the door. Lucas knew that she was going to walk herself down the aisle. The last time he spoke to Hannah, she told him that her father had passed away, and he was the only one who meant enough to her to actually walk her down the aisle. She decided to walk herself, and Lucas was okay with it. Besides, this wasn't the first time for Lucas. Soon the music started, and the bride began to walk down slowly with her flowers in her hand. The closer she came, the more Nathan fidgeted with anxiousness. Lucas stood calmly as the congregation sang along with the toy and didn't stop until Hannah finally got to the altar. She walked majestically up the gold-tiled stairs and stopped beside Nathan, who was smiling at her. He looked so much in love with her. Lucas finally unclasped his arms and then urged Nathan to unveil his bride so the exchange of vows could begin. The young man smiled and then, with nervous hands, reached out to Hannah and pulled the veil off revealing her beautiful face to the congregation. Almost immediately, Lucas let out a pained yelp as he stared at Hannah. It was as if he was seeing her for the first time. He grabbed his head as it throbbed painfully and staggered backward, almost slamming into the pulpit. At once, a hushed gasp washed through the congregation as they all wondered what was wrong with the priest. The altar assistants hurried over to Lucas's side and tried to assist him, but he shrugged off their help and told them he was okay. He tried to get up on his own, but his legs wobbled under his weight, and he went down once again. The assistants were scared that he was going to pass out, so they called for someone to bring water, and Lucas finally allowed them to lead him to his chair. While Nathan and Hannah stood at the altar, looking confused about everything, the water was provided, and it did a lot to calm Lucas down. When he was able to get himself back together, he slowly pushed himself to his feet and approached the couple who were still waiting patiently to get married. He stopped beside them and glared. Everyone could see that he was angry. Then he said that the wedding must be paused at once. Another gasp of shock washed through the congregation yet again. Nathan's mouth fell open as he stared at the priest as if he had suddenly sprouted horns. He couldn't understand the reason for such an extreme decision. He then asked Lucas why he was doing that and ruining their big day and the priest told him that he had just had a vision and needed to investigate it at once. At this, everyone surged to their feet as they looked at the couple standing on the altar. They were ready for whatever was going to happen next. They all knew about Lucas and his gifts for seeing things beyond the physical. Lucas was a highly acclaimed priest who traveled all over the world battling demons and delivering souls possessed by evil spirits. Many times, he could simply see them once he laid eyes on them, they all had distinct markings about them that made them stand out from normal humans. However, there were those who were powerful enough to mask themselves and even hide from his visions. Lucas had met visions of all kinds over the course of his life as a priest, and he knew that the world was a dangerous place where one had to be really vigilant. A few years ago, he had been transferred to this church, and because it was a bit of a small town, he had decided to keep a low profile. He stopped his frequent travels because he was getting old, choosing to leave it to the younger generation instead. Meanwhile, he decided to be responsible for the spiritual welfare of his congregation and host community. 
Right from the minute he moved into the town, he fought off all malevolent and evil spirits holding the town back and making their children sick. Thanks to everything he did, he won a lot of souls, and everyone hung on to his very words as if they were the gospel themselves because they knew that whatever he said was true. This was the reason when he said he had a vision, everyone in the congregation surged to their feet, ready to take action. They knew that either the bride or the groom had a spiritual problem, and it was about to be taken care of. Lucas grabbed the microphone and spoke into it. He said he had always been suspicious about Hannah, right from the very first day, Nathan brought her around for marriage counseling. She had looked so familiar, but he couldn't tell where he had known her from. He had even gone as far as digging into her with the help of the police just to find out where they had crossed paths, but nothing had come of it. He found nothing on her and finally let it go, thinking she was one of those people who looked like someone else. Nathan was having none of this. He told Lucas that there was no way he could know Hannah before. Besides, even if he didn't remember Hannah, then she would have remembered him, but she also had no idea who he was. Nathan was certain the priest was mistaken, and he was hurt that it was costing him his wedding. He begged that they continue with the ceremony so they could exchange their vows. Lucas shook his head. He wasn't satisfied just yet. He turned to Hannah and said that he had to confirm something from her. It was only then that he would be able to go on with the wedding ceremony. He said that he needed to check something on her back. However, the wedding gown she had on covered her completely, right from her neck to her ankles. There was no way he could see anything even if she turned at his request. She shook her head and tried to leave, but Lucas told his congregation not to let her leave. Lucas then told her that he needed to make sure before she could leave. He said what he was looking for was just behind her shoulder. He didn't need her to take off her clothes or anything. She refused vehemently, and this caused a divide in the congregation. Some people didn't get what exactly Lucas was looking for. Nathan and Hannah, above all, had come to be wed in the church, but it seemed Lucas had other plans for them. The others countered their arguments by saying Lucas had never lied about anything. If he said there was something suspicious about Hannah, then they were willing to bet that there was something wrong with her. They then listed out every time he staked a soul that had been possessed and every time he gave a prediction that came true. Eventually, more people were asking Hannah to just do as he asked. The priest then called for five women who were members of the church's council. He knew he could trust them to be fair in the matter. Then he asked them to take Hannah into his office and check her back for any marks. Hannah refused to move an inch. She even threatened not to go through with the marriage if they pushed through with their agenda, but none of the women paid any attention to that. She was taken to the office, and the women went in with her. From outside, Everyone could hear her voice as she railed insults at the women who wanted to check the top of her back for a mark. After a while, silence fell from the office and nothing was heard again. It was as if they had managed to silence Hannah. After a few seconds, the door opened and the women walked out, leaving Hannah behind in the office. Lucas looked at them expectantly, asking them if they had found any markings. The women nodded and told him they found the symbol of a hook burned into her flesh. This was all Lucas needed to hear. He dropped his microphone at once and made his way into the office, closing the door behind him. Almost immediately, they began to hear raised voices once more. Lucas was shouting at the top of his voice, praying hard and calling down the hosts of heaven. Hannah was shouting herself. She was muttering unintelligible words that made no sense to anyone. As the congregation listened on, they felt their hearts race with terror. They were certain Lucas was delivering Hannah from an evil spirit. With every shout Hannah made, Nathan felt his heart sink further and further. Eventually, Hannah could barely speak anymore, and the sounds she was making were more animal-like. At some point, she was barking ferociously like a dog. Other times, she was roaring like a lion, rattling the windows of the church. Amidst all this, they could also hear the sounds of destruction as chairs were smashed against walls and tables were upturned. It sounded as if Hannah was trying to get away. Eventually, they heard one final sound from Hannah, and she was meowing like a wounded cat. The tempo of Lucas's prayers finally reduced with time, and eventually, his voice was reduced to mere mutterings, and his words became intelligible as well. It went on for a while before eventually silence fell on the church once again. Everyone looked at the door of the office. None of them knew what to make of what had happened. The sounds they had heard made them terrified that something had happened to their priest. 
it could be that he had finally met his match and battled something that was beyond him. This was the first time a spiritual battle had happened that shook the entire church to its core. As the silence prolonged and the door remained closed, everyone looked at each other, wondering if they should go and check on the priest and Hannah. Nathan was beside himself with worry as he stared at the closed door. He was barely able to stand in place, but he forced himself to do so. Thanks to everything he had heard earlier, he knew now that there was more to his fiancée than he had been led to believe, but he could barely stay in place. Just as he was about to go toward the door, there was a click as the knob turned, and the door finally swung open, revealing the priest. Lucas looked like he had aged ten years as he stumbled out of his office. He wobbled a bit, but he was able to make it to his seat, which he poured himself into. His body was drenched in sweat, and beads of it were leaking off him and falling onto the floor. However, as the congregation saw him, they began to applaud. The fact that he came out on his two legs meant that he was victorious. When the applause died and the church quieted once again, he picked up his microphone and began to talk. He told them that five years ago, in a different city, he had come across Hannah. Back then, she was also a bride being wed to a young man in his church. Even then, when he knew nothing about her, his spirit had not been settled with her. Whenever he saw her, he always felt a prickling of suspicion, but he couldn't just figure out what it was. He even had a vision about her, but the vision didn't portray her as evil. The vision simply revealed that she had a mark on her back. It was a mark that looked somehow like a six, but still somehow looked like a hook, so it was one or the other. His vision worried him, but there wasn't enough evidence for him to pursue his suspicion. In the end, seeing as he couldn't stop her from marrying simply because of his gut feeling, he officiated her marriage and ended up regretting it greatly. That very night, on the night of the consummation of the marriage, Hannah stabbed her husband to death and vanished into thin air. She fled, and all efforts to track her down proved abortive. Lucas blamed himself for this. That was the main reason he asked to be transferred out of his church and into his current one, because the weight and guilt of his mistake couldn't allow him to have peace there. He had almost made the same mistake when Nathan brought her before him as his wife. All through their marriage counseling, he had always had a weird feeling about Hannah, as if she was keeping something from him, and he couldn't figure out what it was. Besides, the fact that she looked familiar didn't help matters, even though no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't place her face. Somehow, he wasn't able to remember her all through the marriage class, and just like before, since he had no evidence against her, he could do nothing at all. Thankfully, seeing her in a wedding dress had done it for him. The moment Nathan opened her veil, it reminded him of the man who had done the exact same thing five years ago. And just then, it was as if his eyes opened and he saw Hannah for who she was. He immediately got a vision where he saw her killing Nathan later that night. It was what prompted him to pause the wedding at once and proceed to vanquish the power of evil. As Lucas finished speaking, his words were met with silence as the congregation digested his story. They marveled at just how powerful Hannah had been and how she had come close to snuffing out the young and vibrant life of Nathan. Just then, the door swung open and Hannah stepped out. She looked weak and she was sweating even worse than Lucas. In the space of the minutes she and Lucas had battled, she looked like she had lost a lot of weight and her facial features were now gaunt. She leaned against the wall as she approached Nathan, who stepped away from her in shock. She confessed then that she was a member of a fraternal order. Her name wasn't really Hannah but Serena. The goal of the fraternal order was to amass power and wealth in the world, and the way they did that was by luring men, seducing them, and getting married to them so they could kill them on their wedding night. The blood granted immense power to whoever got to kill them, especially on the wedding night. Serena confessed that so far she had killed at least 665 men, and she was going for the ultimate number, which was 666. Killing Nathan would have done that for her, and she would have become extremely powerful and the queen of the fraternal order. She then said that the reason Lucas had not recognized her right away was because she had a spiritual mask over her face, so that even though he found her familiar, he wouldn't know what she was up to. However, she had underestimated just how powerful he was, and in the end, he had seen through her mask, and that led to the intense battle that ended with her losing her powers. 
By the time she was done talking, her legs folded beneath her, and she began to get thinner and thinner. She coughed blood once and then twice. Her eyes rolled back in her head, and then she fell to the floor dead. Everyone let out a huge gasp as they watched the horrifying scene unfold in front of them. They couldn't believe that something like this had happened at what should have been a wedding. Nathan was looking lost as if he had no idea what was happening. There were tears in his eyes at the realization that the woman he loved was a witch who had been planning to kill him once they got married. Lucas insisted that Serena's body shouldn't be left outside for too long and that she needed to be buried as soon as possible due to the evil forces that dwelt within. He made one last attempt to save her soul by saying a prayer over her body before she was taken away for burial, and thus, what started as a wedding turned into a funeral. However, everyone was happy for Nathan. His family and friends were grateful to the priest who had seen what none of them had and ended up saving Nathan's life. Nathan knew he owed Lucas his life. Given a second chance, he promised to become more active in church and to help out whenever he could in matters involving fighting the forces of evil. From his botched wedding day onward, Nathan became a changed man. What a powerful story. Who could have thought Lucas would save Nathan's life in such a way? What would you have done in Nathan's shoes? I'm really keen to know your thoughts, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family to spread the enjoyment. Take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.